Well, this is uh, day three of uh, uh, some cloudy weather where the batteries are basically bricked, uh, bricked by Tesla and by the, the weather for all intent and purpose. Um, so uh, I'll go ahead and take this opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, Rule 21 and how we got ourselves into the situation that we find ourselves and um, uh, maybe talk a little bit about our choices as consumers and see how we can maybe get past uh, this, uh, this, this whole debacle. So the first thing I suppose is let me explain what Rule 21 is. Um, Rule 21 is a uh, California scheme where just like uh, the smart air conditioning systems where, you're, where the, the utility company is able to, in times of peak load, cycle where the, uh, uh, the, those peak loads are by turning air conditioning systems off uh, during, uh, during high use times. Uh, and again, for you know, grid health, make sure we don't blow stuff up. And that's great. Uh, I'm all, all for that. I'm not against that. I'm not even against Rule 21. Now, what Rule 21 is is that uh, it had three parts. The first was obviously, if you're going to have, you know, if you're going to compel compliance for anything, your first step is you have to mandate it. So, what they did was they made it mandatory that any new inverter that was sold, uh, that was installed on a uh, uh, solar system, on a photovoltaic system had to be uh, able to communicate with an outside source, right? had to be able to be talked to. Uh, and that was great for the makers of these things as well. I mean, it's, you know, it's a great benefit to be able to go online, be able to look up what your system's been doing, and also it reports back to the manufacturer. So in the case that there's some issue, then they can uh, uh, address it right away. So that's, that's great. And the um, second part of the whole thing was, as I mentioned before, that you actually had to have an access portal, a web portal, uh, to uh, be able to look at and also manipulate the um, uh, the the piece of gear, the, the inverter. The third stage was that we had to give control of that to the utilities. Now the utilities haven't gotten to that point yet. In other words, the rule was in place, but they kept kind of sliding it back because the utilities actually don't have a way to do that just yet. So that brings us up to uh, what our problem is with, uh, with Tesla, apparently. So with the inverters, the uh, idea was that, again, during those times where you had peak production in summer, you've got all of these rooftops producing power to the grid. Well, what if the grid can't use the power? All right? They need to have some way, it was their argument, and it's a good one, right? Just like the air conditioning systems. They need some way to throttle that back down, right? where um, the, uh, uh, the duck curve, we talked about that in that video last month, where the duck curve, when it deepens, when you have this massive solar production, some of these power plants just can't respond fast enough. Right? And so to help them out, they'll communicate with the inverters and then dumb the systems down so that they're not sending as much power to the grid. Great, perfect, all for it. Well. That's a system that doesn't have any batteries. When you add batteries to the system, it gives the utility companies an even further benefit. If you have those plants on that are providing power to the grid, and for whatever reason, the load goes away, you don't want, again, the, plant, the power plants don't respond quickly, right? Well, you don't want to have to shut down this plant because it takes time then to reinitiate it, right? So what you would really love to do is to go ahead and use the batteries. Send the power from the grid to the batteries. Right? Open up that, uh, that avenue of charge straight from the, uh, the utility grid into the batteries. Also a huge benefit. Basically, if they run it the same way they run it in Australia, you get that power for free. So basically they pay you right, for, for charging the, uh, um, uh, the batteries. The opposite is also true. If the grid suddenly has an increased demand, 
they can then tap into your batteries or the batteries of you know obviously everybody and then each one contributes a bit depending on the region that they're in and then it helps even everything out and you're good i'm also all for that as long as they honor that access well right now they're not really honoring the access so to talk a little bit about tesla what happened here is that this is the uh, uh, the solar edge inverter that we use and it still reports to the solar edge website and gives us data across there it's all great but this inverter now is operating on the battery side of our system so in other words the utility company if they told this to throttle down they really wouldn't have any control over how much power the the batteries could potentially be supplying right so obviously that whole thing needs to move over and so now all the control that the public utility used to demand of this is now demanded of this now each of tesla's batteries each of those batteries has its own inverter on board well the individual inverters that are on board the tesla power supplies don't comply to rule 21 there's no way to communicate right? so the only way for those inverters to communicate and comply with rule 21 is this box here which is the tesla gateway right it acts as a safety circuit make sure that in the case of a power outage though the home will still run off of batteries excuse me i just forgot to put that on vibrate that although the home is still running on batteries that uh, uh, the utility grid is isolated so people working on the grid won't be injured by the uh, by the, the current flow in that direction well what's happening now is that tesla has decided for whatever reason that they're not going to allow us to charge off of the grid i don't know whether that's a regional th regional thing or what but because with the Tesla power walls, your only way to manipulate what it is they do is through the website. There's nothing you can do. You're stuck. So here we are on a cloudy day. The batteries are, uh, are empty. I would have loved to have charged them uh, last night so we could start running our tests and, and what have you. But uh, because the utility company told Tesla, no, you can't let this, let this system power off of the grid. We're stuck. We're stuck. So what does that mean as far as, uh, as, far as your, your consumer choice then when selecting a battery system? Well, it may mean that it's more important now to have some way, even if it's connecting a laptop or just some way to actually directly communicate with the batteries that you own to be able to do what you need to do with it. And uh, what we need to do with it is to buy power when there isn't a great demand for it on the net, uh, on the grid, and that helps the utility companies out. Remember again, back to that duck curve, I'm gonna keep after that because the whole reason for adding these batteries and whole reason for giving California's given a massive amount of money to promote adoption of these batteries was so that they don't have to build peaker plants and that they can even out that duck curve and the whole thing. So uh, uh, allowing people then to charge at midnight and then run for nearly a month through what you've stored and then in supplemental solar, that's supposed to be wh exactly what uh, exactly what they wanted to do. They said, that's what they said they're trying to do to accomplish. Um, but that's not where we're at right now. So I'll keep you guys posted on uh, on that, and uh, we'll end this video here. Make it nice, short, and sweet. And so again, uh, if uh, uh, this is your first video that you're seeing of the Energy Sovereignty Project, feel free to like and subscribe and follow these things. Check out some of the some of the previous videos that we've done. Um, if you have further questions about Rule 21 and how it might uh, apply to you uh, or 
if you're in a different state that doesn't have this but has something similar, I'd love to hear about it, uh, hear how it's affected you. Uh, and then we'll all get together, look at the comments, and, and see how this type of thing might affect our consumer choices. Maybe we don't want to give this much power of control to, uh, uh, to a company that created the batteries. Maybe we want to make sure that by law that it's also mandated that our investment is honored. So, again, thanks for watching, and I uh, uh, hope you continue to follow along with us.